Hello everybody, my name is Andrew Fulham. I am the head of print at NCAD. Print is part of the School of Fine Art and uh, it's one very broad and versatile method where you can develop your ideas and share your ideas um, through multiple iterations of printed material, um, distributing your ideas and making them known to a wide audience. Um, so print is divided into two main categories, um, printed material such as collage, found object, and so on, um, and then drawing and uh, photography, where you, you uh, create your images on a plate or screen and um, multiply them and uh, produce artworks. So uh, just looking at a very, very uh, quick brief, look into the history of, of print, one of the most famous series of prints ever produced by Francisco Goya in 1810, uh, the disasters of war, where Goya was literally reporting from the front line of the Peninsular War um, and uh, bringing back images um, uh, at that time, um, a live report on, on the, um, the war situation. Um, jumping forward, 1940, the artist Joseph Cornell using collage print, cutting out images and mounting them uh, into box frames, um, shadow boxes where the, the glass and the backing are separated and various objects and images can be inserted in between. Another one by Cornell, you can see how he's cut out the parrot shape here and mounted it as if it's in a case um, within, within the box frame along with various objects. And another one by Cornell, where he's cut through a picture and given you a view into a background. Um, so these are all various ways you can use found object or found print in collage, um, treating the, the object as a, a, a reality where it's uh, cut or juxtaposed with other, other objects and other images. John Stezicker, um, very simple juxtaposition of two uh, images, a postcard, a found postcard, and a photograph. Another one, very, very effectively um, juxtaposed where the, the cliff face, the stony cliff face, um, uh, makes a, a very, very clear message about what's happening between these two individuals. Felix Gonzalez Torres uses um, stacks of prints, which he leaves in the gallery or puts on the gallery floor and invites the audience to take away. Here's one uh, series of little booklets. He calls this his passport series. Each little booklet is an image of sky with one single bird flying through it. And the idea is that the, the viewer or visitor to the gallery will take this booklet away, remove it from the gallery, and thereby disseminate the artwork through the, artwork, through the world. Um, thereby releasing the, the passport from, from the gallery, making an artwork that exists beyond the, the walls of the gallery. Um, this is one of our ex-students, uh, Ida Keneally, um, dealing with printed imagery, the um, very famous uh, story of the willow pattern, a uh, story of requited love and arranged marriage. It came to Europe through ceramic plates. Um, and she's taking this very historic image and um, transferring it, uh, screen printing it onto uh, transfer paper and transferring that onto a motorbike which she has painted white. Um, so you've got this juxtaposition of the big hefty sort of macho bike and the very, very delicate willow pattern which we associate with um, delicate china. And here she uses some of that china and she has a video of the willow pattern being tattooed on her back and it's projected onto a plate. So we're very interested in the idea of a palimpsest where uh, a, a single copper plate can be worked and reworked many, many times. Um, so this is a series by Matea Smick and uh, she's basically taking one plate and constantly reworking it. So the plate goes through a whole series of transformations. Um, we do this by etching the copper plate, um, aquatinting it, sanding it back, scraping back into it, redrawing, re-etching, and so on. So the, the image has a life. It has a, a beginning, um, it has a, 
um, a whole series of permutations, a whole series of evolutionary stages, um, which enable it to go through a very, very significant transformation. And it's a bit like having your cake and eating it. When you, when you do a drawing or a painting or um, whatever, make a sculpture, you generally um, put a lot of actions into the making and you end up with one output um, image or, or object. Whereas with this process, the, the copper plate is the matrix that enables you to take this, the image through a series of transformations and to print those transformations um, in a whole series of, of multiple iterations. Isabel Delaney, aka Kitch Doom, working with uh, linocut or woodcut and um, digital images, um, combining the, the fineness of the, the etched plate with the, um, the bolder image and the, the digital using uh, etching on a canvas and mounting a woodcut behind it. So dealing with this, the reality of a, of, a, of a raising blind or whatever, and something happening behind it. Neil Dunn, former student now teaching in the department here, working on these giant screen prints on board. Um, Sophie Daly working at the time of the Eighth Amendment. Um, dealing with a curious story of a, a nun who got pregnant um, and bringing the, the, the historic notion of uh, um, abortion and it's, uh, the way it was treated by the church at the time um, and where, whereby it was quite common to get, get an abortion in, in these days. Um, so she brings that into, into a contemporary context and makes for a very interesting sequence. Is using a, a process called 2.5D animation where you can float uh, images in virtual space and manipulate them. Sean Brennan, Octavian Fitzherbert, working with um, object making and drawing. Um, so you see here he has a whole lot of uh, uh, devices, windmills, um, uh, he's interested in uh, the environment and sustainability. So he's creating these these little fictitious um, machines. Um, he has a drawing here, which is actually the, um, the 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 college and the director of the college coming out of a little building where he's about to sell some tarts that he's made. He's trying to raise money for the college. Um, so what's happening here is that Octavian has objects and he has drawings and the two are interrelating there's it's difficult to know which which came first the drawing or the sculpture but one thing sure is it's a reflexive action between the two where he takes his ideas from two to two three dimensions and, and back so uh every now and again somebody says well how can you get a job doing this um well as an artist you sell your work and um you know you get a have an exhibition or, or two, you can um, uh, sell, sell your prints. And uh, the great thing about print is you can roll them up, put them in a tube and send them anywhere in the world. But we also pride ourselves in our transferable skills. And uh, we, we teach students many, many different things, professional practice, um, negotiation skills, um, how to deal with, uh, with um, a, a broad, um, range of people in the in the negotiation to create installations or artworks for public buildings. So uh, here's Terry McInerney, the manager at the White Cube Bermondsey in London. So I, I like to believe that some of the skills she picked up with us enabled her to get this very, very good job. So uh, here's a view of the studio, everybody with their masks on, maintaining social distance as best they can. Um, so, if you're interested in print, I would recommend it to you as a versatile method, um, which will enable you to make your ideas manifest in a very interesting range of possibilities. Thank you very much.